playoff hockey is here, baby, and we're breaking down everything you need to know about the Minnesota Wild's first round matchup against the St. Louis Blues. Even better, Lou Korak, Blues writer for NHL.com, joins us to share his thoughts on the series from the enemy's perspective. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Jim Beam, Better Edge, and Royal Credit Union. This is season three, episode 123. Marcus Foligno fan club assemble. Not only is sodastick.com the only place to get your official Marcus Foligno fan club tee, but it's also the only place to get all your favorite wild team garb, plus so much more beyond hockey. Use code BARDOWNBEAUTIES for 15% off your total purchase at sodastick.com. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting let's play hockey prior to the start of each game, or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Remember, drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021. James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporate Claremont, Kentucky. From New Voice Studios. Oh yeah, you betcha. Let's go to the boat. Discombobulate <laughs> on the spot. Part of the Talk North Podcast Network. Fly out to Russia personally. <laughs> Jesse Pierce. This is off the rails. We're only a couple <laughs> minutes in. Alexis Pearson. We're not going to throw batteries on, on the ice at, you know, Kirill Kaprizov. This is, we're not that crazy. <laughs> like. Bar Down Beauty's Podcast. <laughs> Was it about guys getting hammered down low night after night? No. It's like everyone loves to crap on analytics, but the analytics do not lie here. We are firing Fred at the top of the hour. More hit. It's like T. T. Starts now. What's going on, everybody? Don't hit the panic button. There is an episode released today. There's just also something going on. Alexis, uh, game one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. That's what's going on. Um, so we've been kind of running around. Lou Korak from St. Louis will be joining us to break down the Blues portion of this series as Minnesota faces the St. Louis Blues in round one of the Western Conference playoffs. Uh, Alexis, though, let's let's talk about the Minnesota Wild. What do you think the Minnesota Wild need to do to uh, get past St. Louis? What are some of the strengths, weaknesses, X's and O's? Let's go. Yeah, it, it was a hectic week in the Wild played their last regular season game Friday night. You guys all know we obviously typically record Friday morning, so we had to wait to do that. And then with the playoffs starting, figuring out uh, all the logistics of that. So we're doing a little Monday morning record instead. And yeah, I, I spent some time crunching numbers. I'll show the YouTube viewers. I was I was Just running some your stats homework. this what morning. <laughs> I was He's trying to figure so out <laughs> well, I had a little extra time. So I'm like, all right, let's figure out what this looks like. We've been hearing the breakdown of the stats for weeks because we knew the Wild were going to be playing the St. Louis Blues. Now that the final season is done, we have the final regular season stats. And to me, the two X factors in this series is going to come down to goaltending and special teams. Obviously, St. Louis gets the nod for special teams. St. Louis, uh, or excuse me, the wild get the nod for goaltending, I think. Um, so that's the two X factors to me, Minnesota wild are a great five on five team, but we know St. Louis can fly as well. So I don't think it's going to be easy for the wild if they stay five on five, but we all know how difficult it can be for them on special teams. Other than that, both the wild and blues went 12, two and two in the month of April. So they're literally coming off the regular season with, with identical records here. Um, the blues have nine players with more than 20 goals. The wild have six. I mean, on paper, this is almost as close of a matchup as you could possibly get. Um, it's other than those two X factors. So I think that's what it's going to come down to. It really is a shame that these two teams are playing each other in the first round, just for the pure fact that both these teams deserve to have a long playoff run with the seasons they've put together. And it's just not going to happen. One of them's going home um, in, in possibly seven games or less here. 113 points for the Minnesota Wild and a lengthy list of franchise records, both individually and as a team. You love to see it. But 109 points for the St. Louis Blues for scoring something like four goals per game. Uh, had a 14 game point streak going on. Um, so they're pretty good. It's going to be a good matchup. Again, we'll dive into more of the Blues and what makes them tick with Luke Korak coming up in segment two. Uh, but back to the focus on the Wild. I love how Alexis, you brought up the special teams and goaltending being um, the big kind of X factors for Minnesota. Confirmed, kind of, sort of. <laughs> Ian told us yesterday he was going to be, I'm going to call it the Evson evasion. He's not confirming things, but he's kind of like hinting at it. Mark Andre Fleury started for game one. That's what we're looking at. Uh, he was in the starters net, which Gene claims there's not, but there is. There's a starters net. 
Um, and so Cam Talbot not getting that game one start despite having a very great, good close to the end of the regular season. But as we've talked about at length, you signed Marc-Andre Fleury for a reason. You didn't sign him to do well in the regular season. You didn't need him to get you to the playoffs necessarily. You needed him to get you through the playoffs. So he's going to get the first look here against St. Louis. Um, yes, he is also 0-3 against the Blues this year, but he had Chicago in front of him. Come on, <laughs> let's not freak out. Um, so it'll be good. And the nice thing is, I don't think this team is going to be afraid to pull flurry if they need to you've got a capable goaltender in cam he'll be ready to go it'll all be fine it's a good problem to have I know people are probably all up in my mentions <laughs> upset that Talbot's not starting I still think I win something against you Alexis from an earlier bet about any of this but we'll get there eventually um so I do I think that's the difference because I'm not as confident in St. Louis's goaltending as I am in Minnesota's and I don't say that often you guys I yeah. never say that you guys know how critical I've been of this goaltending situation. Um, so that's what I think. I think goaltending will play an even bigger role as it does, as it tends to throughout the playoffs. We all know it. We all love it. Um, I'm willing to bet Minnesota does get the, the, uh, better edge, if you will. Oh, <laughs> see what I did there. Nice. Better edge. B E T T R. That's one of my better ones. That's that one of good. my better. That was good. That was top 10 for sure. Top 10 better edge, B E T T R edge.com. Shout out to them. Obviously uh, congrats to the Kirill Caprice off Jersey winner in their latest competition. Don't forget. We got beat the butte. We'll have different variations of that, but you can bet on games uh, beyond hockey too. Mm -hmm. They're awesome. Code buttes B E A U T S. will get you a free $10 when you sign up. So if you're not signed up already get on that. Um, but no, I mean, that's kind of my big thing, Alexis, like you'd mentioned yeah. special teams goaltending. I don't know that there's going to be any difference. I mean, the one thing I think people fail to remember is the fact that it's not going to be as offensively charged as mm -mm. you've seen the wild play, as you've seen for St. either Lewis team. Play, yeah. Because, yeah. Your four check, your back check. I mean, go back to that Calgary game, which I've attested to it was a very boring game, but that's a playoff game. It's yeah. going to be a two, one, it's going to be a three, two. It's not going to be, I'll be shocked if anybody scores more than four goals mm -hmm. in this series, because that's just the way you're going to shut down. And St. Louis is very good at that. So Minnesota is going to really have to, uh, to hem them in their own zone. You've got a full healthy team on both sides. Yeah. So um, it's going to be a good series, Alexis. Do you think that home ice advantage is going to really help uh, the Minnesota wild? I've really gone back and forth on this because like I've mentioned in past episodes, I really believe at the end of the day, the best teams will win. And, you know, whether that's at home ice or on the road or wherever the best teams find a way to get the job done. But like we've said a lot in this, uh, in the podcast, this season, this Minnesota wild fan base this year has just been unreal. And, and the, the players, the coaches have talked about it almost every home game. They're like, man, the fans were incredible. And yes, coaches and fan and players will talk about that a lot. They'll always give credits to their fans. And for the most part, the NHL fan bases are great and they do cheer their teams on to wins, no matter how good or bad their team is. So I, I do think that you can take it with a grain of salt in a certain sense, but I think especially with this matchup against St. Louis, this is kind of the conclusion I've come to. If it was maybe a different team that the wild have had some success against in the season, more success, obviously, than they had against St. Louis, where they only got a couple overtime loss points. Um, I think it maybe wouldn't have mattered as much, but I think it's really important the Wild get a a early or a couple early wins here in this series against St. Louis. And I really think that'll help being at home. Um, I don't think either team is going to jump to a very large lead in this series. I do think it's going to be very back and forth, but I think it'll do the wild some wonders if they could get at least a, a one out of two wins here in these first two games, at the XL energy center this week, just knowing how much they've struggled against the blues this season, just get a little confidence going like, okay, we can beat this team. Good. Great. Now let's get on with the rest of the series. And I think home ice will help them in that sense. Do you, uh, where do you stand? I know you've kind of, we've kind of been on the same page here. Have you changed yeah. your mind on it? I mean, it's, you say during the regular season too, right? Of course you want your fans. And of course mm -hmm. you want to use that momentum. And I think Minnesota really has their record here at XL Energy Center is tremendous. St. Louis has not played Minnesota at the X this year because they were obviously over at Target Field for the Winter Classic. And the other two games happened in St. Louis. So, um, you know, it's, yeah, it's the extra man. It's the extra attacker. And these fans are so hungry for the mm -hmm. success of the team. And it's so much fun. Shout out to Paul Anderson, the guy. If any of you guys have been to the game, he shows up on the Jumbotron in the third and he's like, let's go and love him. We're going to have him on the pod next week. But I mean, you have that, you have just general fans that are just, they're mm -hmm. so, like I said, hungry for it. Um, no doubt that helps. No doubt. But I mean, you have to win on the road too. You yeah. have to be able, you're not, you don't get four games here <laughs> to win. You have to go to St. Louis eventually. So whether you start or finish, you know, mm -hmm. on the road, it, I don't know that it necessarily comes down to it. Cause you have to play your game. You have to play your best. I mean, 
I don't think you're going to go into to any arena and, you know, just completely dominate or lose whether that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Fresh, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You guys know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, I so do yeah, want to ask you quick, what... Jesse, because we've talked about this in certain senses as well. But the fact that the Wild haven't played well against the Blues this season, haven't beat them this season, and even dating back to, you know, the last couple seasons, they've struggled against them. Last year, the Wild dominated the Golden Knights in the regular season, lost to them in seven games in the playoffs. How much stock do you put into regular season series heading into the playoffs. Do you think it matters? Does it not matter? Is it a whole new beast in the playoffs? Where, where do you stand on that? Because I do think it's a really interesting debate of like, okay, how do you match up versus regular season versus playoffs with the same exact team? I love that you asked that. Cause I literally just asked Dino this in our <laughs> press conference. Um, it's a new season. It's a clean slate. It's zero, zero right now. It doesn't matter what happened win, lose or draw in, in the regular season. And yes, you go back and you look, it's been something like nine straight that they mm. have lost to St. Louis. There were two overtime games mixed in there this year. Right. I mean, there was that pushback. There's that resilience in this Minnesota wild team. Um, but it is, I don't think you can look, I mean, take the things that you did well during the regular season against any opponent obviously carry them with you, but it is, it's a completely different animal. Like I said, you're not going to be putting up six goals on any opponent in the playoffs. And so you're going to have to lock down on defense. You're going to have to play tough, but you know, your past record against this team means nothing. It's mm -hmm. a completely fresh start. Um, and again, you have Marc-Andre Fleury now, which is a different team than you saw when you had Cam Talbot in that too. So um, all things said, I think it's, it's just kind of a, a new animal. I do want to chirp our buddy, uh, Fred, Producer I was Fred. just going to say, we got to get Fred's take because Before for those who don't know, break, yes. yeah, if you're new here, if you don't know, Fred is a St. Louis blues fan. So, um, mm -hmm. we, we have to get Fred's take Fred, share your hottest take on the series. Who are you taking? We need to know who Fred's taking in the series. If, are we hey. going to fire you now or like later? First off, I've been quiet, letting <laughs> you guys do your thing. Just sitting here. No worries. Watching the record. You just had to pull me into this mess. I mean, we want to know. We want to know. Okay. We need Fred's first hot off. Take. You need to know that. Yes, I'm from St. Louis, but <laughs> because I've covered this team for so many years now, team. I would say the wild are my number one team. Oh, okay. When the wild aren't in the playoffs, I'm flying my blues flag. The freak flag flies, but I, I still am rooting for the wild. So don't, so don't you're like, I'm this big, just making sure. Here. We're just making sure. But now your, like, your opinion like the villain is the of the podcast. <laughs> I mean, come on. Your opinion is even greater now though. Cause you're rooting for both teams. So you're going to be the most unbiased of the three of us. So who are you Fair. taking? Who are you taking in this playoff series? Well, I, I, I think I going back to a few months ago when I brought up the whole point, if the wild are kicked out in the first round, I believe that this season is a fail. Okay. Yep. And you guys were kind of like wishy-washy on that thing. Yep. I, I think the wild have to get out of this round. It is so important for their franchise, especially with the cap hits that are happening the next year. Yeah. They have to get out of this round to make this season that. worth it. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think it is more important to the wild to get out of round one. And I think they're going to finally step up and break that curse. How many games? What do you think? You think it's I think a it's long gonna, I think it's going to be six games. I think it's going to be at home. You're um, on the same page as Jesse. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm saying seven. I really would be shocked if it's less than seven, to be honest. But I, I just think these two teams are too evenly matched to, to do whoever wins to win it in less than that. But it would be nice to see, um, to see the wild, get it done in, in a little quicker fashion as well, but we'll see. All right. So Fred, you said in six, Jesse and I's predictions come up later in, in the podcast. So stay tuned for those, but now we, so they don't come up later. They come up now. Well, our full <laughs> thoughts on them. Yeah. So <laughs> But now we've got Fred's opinion mixed good in tease. and we got everybody. Yeah, was. good tease. Yeah, I just, just spilled all the tea right there. That's Still listen fine. to segment three. No one's going to listen to the rest of the they show. They just, they're <laughs> like, done. all right, bye. All right, well, it. at that point, I'm out. Don't even stay tuned for the guests. Just go home now. Yeah. <laughs> just go. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break. Do listen because Lou Korak, uh, NHL.com correspondent like myself, but for the St. Louis Blues, joins us to break down a little bit about what the Blues, Chief, all of those good things. And then Segment three, we do talk about what we think for the series, <laughs> but more, there's more, just more of us, more of oh, there's more. So, yeah, there's more. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. It's hockey season, baby. And the best way to head into a new season is to be fully equipped with all the merch you need to cheer on your favorite teams. Oh, and some Bardown Beauties merch too, right? Right. We've got you covered. Literally head over to teespring.com where you can find all kinds of custom design Bardown Beauties apparel, plus so much more. We're back joining us now, the slightly less attractive version of me in St. Louis, uh, <laughs> a colleague. I'm just saying just slightly Louie, just slightly. <laughs> 
uh, Mr. Lou Korak and NHL.com independent correspondent for the St. Louis Blues. Uh, Louis, what's going on? I do love you. You know, I love you. I love you too, Jess. <laughs> and hello, Alexis. Hello. And good, to, good to finally meet you. And uh, that's a hell of an intro there, Jess. I love it. <laughs> You know, I got to gotta stir the pot. Lou and I go way back, way back to, uh, I think, my first ever playoff series that I covered for the Minnesota Wild happened to be against the St. Louis Blues. So familiar foes. Lou, what's kind of the vibe in the in the Blues room heading into this first round against uh, Minnesota? Obviously, St. Louis got the best of them, but two very close games in particular in this three series during the regular season. Um, they feel good. I mean, it's you can kind of throw the last two games out the window, especially the last one, because, you know, they needed, they needed two things to happen. Obviously they needed Minnesota to lose and they needed to win. And you're talking about a lot happening there. And I, and then when those wild jumped out to that quick, what two to nothing lead, I don't, I don't, I don't care who you are, coaches or players, they know what was going on. And I think they kind of had an understanding that uh, this wasn't going to happen. So uh, let's just get out of this last game and, not really get anybody hurt. But anyway, before that 16 game point streak, they really got on a roll. They were, they, they kind of plowed through March. Like uh, they didn't want to do this. They didn't want to be a part of this, but uh, really got to their game and playing well. And uh, whether they started on the road or whether they started at home, I really just got the vibe and sense that they really didn't care and just ready to get this thing going. You know, I've uh, I've been crunching numbers. I'll show you my little cheat sheet here this morning. I was crunching numbers looking at this matchup, and it seems to me the two X factors um, in this series potentially could be special teams and goaltending. In your mind, would you agree with that? Do you see anything else that could be a really big X factor? Because these two teams match up pretty evenly stats-wise, but those seem to be the two areas where maybe one team or the other could get a nod. I think so. I mean, you can look at it. You can really, when you're so evenly matched up, you can look at really a number of different areas. And I'll be honest with you, I think five on five is going to be real key in this series. Um, whoever can stay disciplined, stay out of the box, and not have to deal with the special teams, even though the Blues are in top five, I, I think they wouldn't have a problem if special teams really got involved in this because mm -hmm. they've been so good at it all year. And But if if this game, and, and you're going to have to expect a lot of close tight checking games where players are going to try to stay as disciplined as they can. And if this game becomes a five on five game, I think that's really what's going to be key here. You know, Alexis brought up the goaltending. Obviously it's a goaltending debate. We will finally realize who the starting goaltender Minnesota goes with. Is it Mark Andre Fleury? Is it Cam Talbot? But let's talk about the blues net minders. Uh, Jordan Pin Binnington, not necessarily your number one starter this year. It looks like Billy Uso kind of took over that job. What is the goaltending tandem situation like in St. Louis heading into the series? Well, Craig Berube said he was going to text us on the way to the airport yesterday. <laughs> and I, I guess that must have slipped his mind. But uh, I, uh, you know what? I, I think right now it's who's supposed to lose. And, you know, he's the one that really carried them through times when things really weren't going so hot. And, uh, you know, he stood up to the plate and got the job done. And, you know, I think down the stretch here, both really had their moments of, of good play and both had their moments of, you know, eh, <laughs> So, so play. So, uh, but I think going into this, I think Huso has deserved it uh, based on just his overall seasonal play. And uh, I think he's going to get this shot. And, uh, but you know what? Um, they're confident in both guys. I mean, you know, people tend to forget that uh, Jordan Bennington's the one that really helped them <laughs> win the Stanley Cup. Yeah. I mean, that, that wasn't that long ago. So, but you know, I've always, ladies, I guess. I got to make sure I don't say guys here. Don't, <laughs> oh gosh, we never You care. can say whatever. <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know, but I just, uh, ladies, I think what you have to understand with the goaltending position is, is I've always kind of viewed it as a, what have you done for me lately thing. Mm -hmm. And lately he's been the guy who has been the guy. Uh, we'll find out here uh, again as well, uh, just as the wild are and, my guess there is it's going to be a Mark Andre Fleury. What the heck did you bring him in here for <laughs> to begin with? So, yeah. uh, but we'll see. So uh, that that'll be an interesting scenario the way that it plays out. And uh, but again, you have two teams that probably aren't going to be afraid should they have to to go to the mm -hmm. other guy. 
hundred percent. And neither are Jake Allen because I still have nightmares about yeah. Jake Allen from that first series. So <laughs> moving on, um, you know, and also it's going to come good. <laughs> God, like that was Minnesota's, I just, whatever. It's not, we're not going to bring it up, Louie. We're not going to bring it up. It was tortures me every You're single ruffling day. Your feathers, Jess. It's oh, good. Yeah, like we're that. reopening it. We're reopening some wounds here. <laughs> oh, the worst. Uh, you know, it's also going to come down to two very special Russian players for each team. Tarasenko having a heck of a year. Kirill Kaprizov, how much fun is it going to see? Uh, going to be to see those two guys kind of go at it a little bit. But again, it's going to be such a tight checking game. Do you think either of them are going to get the space that they need to do and dazzle like uh, like we've seen them do all regular season? It's not going to come free. So they're going to, you know, do what they've done all year. They're going to have to earn it. And, uh, you know, I you know, I can speak from Tarasenko's perspective. And uh, it's it's been a heck of a turnaround for him because, you know, dealing with all the shoulder surgeries that he's had to endure, it, it hasn't been easy. I'm telling you, uh, I've, you know, talked to a number of different people that have gone through or, or have helped doctors that have helped other athletes deal with the sort of injury that he's dealt with. And uh, I want to tell you, it's 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 grueling and it's it's not something you really want to go through is from a from a rehab perspective. It, it really, really, really is tough and it can play some mental games on you. And I'm sure at times uh, he'd probably go home and maybe throw something against the wall and say the hell with this. I don't want to do this anymore. But, uh, you know, you got to give him some credit, uh, career high in points for him this year. And, uh, you know, you go through all the, you know, the trade request talk that happened last summer. And it's not the first time that it's happened with a player or an athlete and things tend to uh, work themselves out. We'll see how things go moving forward from that. But uh, he's had a hell of a year, and that line's had a really good year with uh, Robert Thomas and uh, Pavel Buchnevich, another Russian. Mm-hmm. You know, you you talked about the uh, year that the Blues won the Stanley Cup and what Bennington did there. And, you know, we're a couple years removed from that, obviously. And that team was was very unique. The Cinderella story there, the turnaround halfway through the season. How much would you compare this Blues team, both on and off the ice, to that team that won the Stanley Cup not too long ago? It's an interesting question. Uh, There are some comparables, but when you look at the roster, half of those guys are still here. So I guess from that standpoint, you kind of have to gravitate. You continue to gravitate towards what those guys did. And, you know, they had their little swoon, like I said earlier here in March. Mm -hmm. So that team then, I mean, they were dead last, what, January 3rd Mm -hmm. of 2019. And nobody really saw what they did coming. So I think this team had a little bit more traction going forward, but not, not nearly, not nearly as bad, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you've got a veteran presence on this team that understands and knows what it takes to win. Uh, That's going to go a long way. You know, you had a guy like a Nick Letty in Minnesota, and I'm (laughs) sure you're all, uh, you're all proud of those guys all (laughs) over the league. I mean, uh, he's, he's come in and been a stabilizing force and we'll see how much he's going to be able to, to help this group out. I think this group's got a little bit more of a, flash and daz to them, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, they're more of a transitional team and maybe not that heavy, hard hitting bruising team of three years ago mm-hmm. that would really bully, bully you out of a series. And that's really what they did. Uh, this team's got some capabilities to do that if they, if they have to go down that route. But I think this is a team that uh, is more going to bank and rely on their ability to uh, create offense. They've got nine guys that score 20 or more goals, which is, pretty good in in this day and age. I know Minnesota's got six, so that parity could really uh, help determine who's going to win this series, too. You mean Nick Letty, who Minnesota drafted but traded for Cam Barker? That (laughs) Nick Letty? No, we're totally... Another wound we're going back to here. (laughs) We are going to take a quick break. When we come back, Lou, we want your take on how the series is going to end up. How many games? Who's going to win? No bias. But uh, but first, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey guys, this is producer Fred. I just wanted to ask everyone to go out there and spread the word about Bar Down Beauties. Leave us a like, share, thumbs up, review, you name it, we want to hear from you. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and of course, your favorite podcast app. We're back. All right, let's just, let's get into it. Louie, 
how is the series going yes, to go? What, how many games are we going? Are we going to see seven? I mean, again, we've talked about how on paper, these two teams match up. We've discussed with you the strengths of St. Louis. Alexis and I earlier discussed the strengths of the Minnesota wild. So how many games are we going to get in this first round? And no bias. We can't, you know, no bias. <laughs> Who's going to come out uh, ahead and move on to the second round. I think it is going to go seven. Um, I think you can throw out the fact that, yeah, I mean, the Blues have had the better of the wild here in recent memory. Uh, a lot of games have been close, though. Uh, they've just seemed to have found a way to win. Um, so I'm going to be the bad guy and I'm going to pick St. Louis in seven. But you know what? It really wouldn't surprise me if it goes. Yeah. the. Uh, it, it, it could go either way. I mean, I, I've been thinking about this and I've just been sitting on the fence the whole time. So <laughs> since I know you two are going to pick Minnesota, honestly, <laughs> And I am honest when I say this, I was going to pick the wild in seven, but somebody's, somebody's got to be the, the somebody's got to, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'll be the bad apple here and I'll pick St. Louis in seven. It's going to be tightly contested. It really is. I mean, it, it, there's going to be ebbs and flows throughout this series. And uh, if, if this thing goes anything less than six, I will be absolutely <laughs> yeah. shocked. I really yeah. will. Is yeah. it going to go back and forth or is St. Louis or Minnesota going to come back and make it interesting to, to get to seven? Or do you see it kind of going, you know, either way, each, any given night? I think it's just going to go any, any given way. I, I just don't see anybody really getting a strong uh, stranglehold on this uh, and jumping out to a quick lead. And then the other team's going to have to shift back. I just don't think that either one, not to say that they're not equipped to do that, but mm -hmm. I just think the other team, whoever gets off to a, a strong start, let's say, in the series, I don't know if the other team is going to have the capability just to kind of take the stranglehold back, if, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So if somebody, say, goes up two to nothing or three to one, what have you not, uh, I just don't know if the other one's going to be capable of, of making that strong pushback to be able to make this a series. I just think it's going to go back and forth. That's fair. Alexis, what you got? What do you think? I also have been on the fence about this for so long. I, I am also convinced it's going seven games either way. And I think it would be a, a darn shame, shame if we didn't get seven games out of these two teams with, with how good they both are. Um, but like you said, uh, Lou, I gotta, I'm going to be the bad guy too. I'm picking the wild and seven. And I agree with you a hundred percent that I think if one of these teams gets a substantial lead in this series, they are going to have the confidence to close it out. I mean, both these teams are contenders. They're, they, they battle hard. We've seen them do it against each other. We've seen them do it with other teams. Um, but I really feel like both these teams have enough confidence in themselves that if they jump to that lead, um, they are going to be able to hang on for the series, but man, I, I hope we get seven games and I'm picking the wild Jesse. Um, you know, you got 113 points versus 109 points. It's a darn shame that this has to happen uh, in the first round, but I'm going to pick the Minnesota wild. I'm going to pick them in six though. I'm not going to go seven. Ooh, I love okay. me, love me a game seven. I just think Minnesota's really feeling themselves right now. And I mean, I think a lot is going to determine how well that starting goaltender for Minnesota does, whether that is flower, which yes, I do believe it will be flower, but if it is Talbot, he's deserved that position and he's des definitely deserved the serious consideration. Um, mm -hmm. you know, but flurry as of late in the regular season was kind of meh, frankly, but we all know how he does in the, uh, in the postseason. So you hope you get that Mark Andre Fleury. I think that's going to be a huge X factor, but I do, I have a, just a, just a sense that Minnesota is going to get it in six. They've got their home ice. They've had a hell of a year this year, regular season wise. You've got the depth. You've got kind of a healthy, a healthy team right now as well. Marcus Felino's back. Matt Zuccarello's back. Your defense is back and healthy. So um, a lot of really good things for Minnesota. Now, not to say that St. Louis obviously isn't going to counter <laughs> everything I just said yeah. very handily. And, and I do, I, my biggest concern remains around that special teams where St. Louis's PK is very good and Minnesota's power play is not. So it's going to come down to that tough five on five battle. I want to jump in real quick. I want to ask Lou, who do you think in the West the road goes through to get to the Stanley cup. Do you think it's the wild or the blues, whoever wins that series? Mm. Because I do think that's one of the best series overall in this first round, or do you think it's a different team? Cause there's a lot of good teams in the West. Who do you think it goes through to get to the Stanley cup? It's easy to pick Colorado, but I'm still going to stick with Colorado. I mean, they've, they've just, they've been knocking on the door for a couple of years now. Yeah. And just haven't been able to blow through it at, at some point. You're going to have to, because <laughs> I, I'll tell you right now, um, I don't want to say it's it's now or never for them because they've got so many good young players on that team. But 
you've got enough veterans and you've got enough talent on that team where if they don't make that push this year, mm-hmm. you got to start to wonder. I mean, you really do. So uh, Calgary's right there. Yeah. Uh, these two teams, again, I, I, I think it's, I think it's a shame. Somebody's going to be out in the first round <laughs> I know. because neither one of them deserve to be, but it's the makeup and the way this, this whole thing is configured. So I'm going to stick with Colorado just because they have been kind of the benchmark here and uh, rightfully so. And we'll, we'll, we'll see though, if they can hold up their end of the bargain. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I'm excited to get the series off the road. I'm excited that it's at home because Louie, I get the extra game or game. So sorry about <laughs> that. You're robbing me of a third check. trip up here. You're robbing <laughs> me of a third trip up here. Thanks, Jess. Sorry. I appreciate yeah. it. All I know. Right. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> but uh, again, Lou, thanks for joining us so much. Who's your Who's you your Stanley it. Cup winner? I guess before we let you go, who's the Who's you got taking My it all? God, I I can't. I don't even know what I'm doing beyond the morning <laughs> skates today. And you're asking me about a Stanley Cup. All right, Cup Dean Evson. Wow. We don't look past the day. <laughs> How about if I give you how about if I give you one later on this afternoon? No, that's not gonna work. All right, you know what? I'm just gonna pull pull one out of my head here. I'm gonna say the Florida Panthers. Okay. I, how like about it. That? I mean, I just I like I I don't know. There's something about them. Uh I get it, their goaltending's a question mark, but man, what a fun team to watch. It's just yeah, it's when so you fun. average over four goals a game. <laughs> I was in, just gonna say that game, yeah. in this day and age, that is just crazy. They're getting Aaron Eckblad back. Maybe mm-hmm. that's gonna stabilize their defense. So I'm gonna stick with the Florida Panthers. Let's uh let's see the rats on the ice like we did back <laughs> in the day. I mean, it's it's been oh, far God. too long. <laughs> It's, you know, what's funny is that Sergei Bobrovsky is a question mark and goal. Like you never thought yeah. you'd say that. Right. I, and I love me some Spencer and I, I agree. I'm going Florida Panthers. I unfortunately think the winner comes out of the East. The East is just crazy insane. Right. And I would just be happy with anybody, but Tampa, sorry, Ryan McDonough. I'd love you, but they've uh, had their time in the sun. They've had yeah. their time. In the, I mean, and it's probably all the, all the uh, classic fans are going to hate that. I even said another Florida team like, <laughs> oh, how dare you? Blah, blah, yeah. blah. But I said what I said. Hey, I'm with you. The- Think of it this way, though. If either one of these teams make it through the Western Conference, boy, how about that? A trip to Florida. Interesting. That would be, oh. See, now, the good, thinking smart there, Lou. Thinking smart. Uh, Alexis, yeah. who you She's got? She's planning his vacation as we speak. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna go a little crazy here because this is my team in the West. I'm going to say the Calgary Flames make it to the Stanley Cup this year. I think they, I don't want to call them a dark horse because they're the winner of their division, but I do think they are just such a well-rounded playoff team Mm -hmm. um they don't have maybe some of the the top tier talent in certain areas or certain stats that other teams have and um but i i really like calgary so i'm saying calgary um goes to the stanley cup i think they got a good chance to win it because what do they have goaltending goaltending yep god markstrom is so good i agree they're my they're my team in the west like i i colorado i think is is beatable i think minnesota could beat them st louis could beat them like they're not they don't and they shouldn't again on paper, you look at them, you're like, you're insane, but Calgary <laughs> would be my Western team too. Yeah. So I, uh, I agree with pick that. At all. It's not you a know, bad pick at all. Really? You no, know, yeah. you know, it's going to be fun. It's that, but playoffs are crazy. Give me some mm-hmm. chaos, right? Let's yeah. see some ups. Yeah. Let's see Edmonton or Toronto, like move on for a change. Right. Like, yeah. That'd be wild. Who knows? They, well, uh, you say Edmonton. That's funny because I'll be honest with you. Uh, that that's kind of, that's my upset pick in the West. Really? I, think the Kings, okay. I think the Kings are going to win that series. I really, I, something tells me, I just, I like the way they can lock you down on defense. And yeah. uh, I, I just think defense kind of trumps the offense a little bit more complex. hundred percent. Agree. 100%. Yeah. Well, Louie, thank you so much for joining us. We love Got you. It. Happy to have Absolutely. you in the state of hockey. Um, we'll have you, we'll see you around. We'll be bumping into you here and there uh, and look forward to a great series. All right, ladies, looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. That's going to do it for this week's episode. As always, shout out to Talk North for featuring us on their lovely network, Better Edge, B-E-T-T-R Edge.com, code Buttes, B-A-A-U-T-S. We'll get you a free $10, Beat the Butte, against Jesse on Tuesdays, Alexis on Thursdays, probably a little bit different now that we've hit playoffs. So stay tuned to our social medias and Better Edge's social medias. Congrats to the Kirill Kaprizov jersey winner. Love to see it. Very lucky heading into uh, heading into playoffs. So pretty cool from them. So to stick.com i'm rocking the ryan hartman bird t-shirt today <laughs> for those of you that didn't see it uh 15 off with code bar down beauties at checkout on all your purchases they got you covered for all those team shirts in case you didn't see dane mizzitani's uh article in the pioneer press about the uh, way that they fit into that locker room culture for the minnesota wild also shout out to jim beam we love them cheers to you cheers to me and shout out to royal credit union 
uh, you know, all good things. And you guys, we love you. Thank you so much. Regular season was fun. Playoffs, baby. It's getting better. So thank you always. Uh, have a great week. Bye.